testing. Testing. Can you see me? And am I in focus? Can you see my face? Is the autofocus detecting my face? And can you hear me okay? <laughs> One of many tests that I'll be doing in today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, so if you need a website, go to squarespace.com forward slash heaton. Okay, I should be in focus, I should be correctly exposed and I should be sounding good. This is uh, difficult for me to tell because this camera has no flip out screen. But today's video, more than anything, more than a photo shoot, which it always is, but more than anything this is just a morning where I am testing an entirely new setup because I have drastically changed my video camera, my photography stills camera, and my entire setup. Everything has changed and this is a complete new way of taking photographs and making videos and I need to see if it works. Definitely feels like there should be a photograph here. Definitely. There is a photograph within 20 meters of where I'm stood. I just can't see it. So before I was stood just back there, desperate to find a shot because I could see that the conditions were just right. We had a little bit of mist starting to roll through, but I couldn't find a single standout subject to focus on to make my image. So what I decided to do was just come down the hill slightly and we've got behind me these incredibly uniform trees. So rather than finding a single subject to focus on, I decided to find uniformity and structure and a pattern with a backsplash of beautiful orange color and with the mist just rolling through I think it makes for a, quite a nice image now because this whole thing everything here is a completely new setup for me and I'll explain why in a minute um, you know I'm I'm struggling with different cameras and using new systems and everything so I had very very little time and I knew that that mist was going to come and go in a matter of minutes or even seconds but I did manage to fire off one shot so I think what was really important with my composition was just making sure that it was clean simple with minimal distractions now I was at 55 mil but this is a 1.6 crop sensor so that's about oh, 70 mil uh, so right at the very end of the lens and I focused on the near trees f5 no f4 <laughs> f4 to give a nice soft background um, iso 160 which is the base iso for this camera and uh, two second timer to avoid camera shake and wobble but i think really what made the image was the simplicity which was enhanced by the mist so i'm really glad that i've got that image and i'm kind of hoping 
that a bit more mist might blow through this morning. Okay, so let me explain my completely new setup and what I'm doing and why. Basically, I am tired. <laughs> I am sick to death of hiking all of my massive heavy camera gear up hills, up mountains, and for miles and miles, you know, across, across the landscape in search of photography. Uh, or in search of photographs. When I did my Cumbria Way hike, which was like 77 miles over a few days, it was too much, too much gear, too much camera gear. So I always wanted to downsize, not for everyday shooting, but for certainly on those days when you're putting in more than sort of eight to 10 miles or you're going up significant hills. So I'm going to Nepal next week. Um, in fact, I may actually be there now whilst you're watching this video. And in Nepal, we are gonna be trekking trekking for miles and miles every day high altitude and up ginormous <laughs> mountains but the thing is it's i don't want my gear to start hindering me so i want something fast and lightweight now if you're just doing photography that's not necessarily a problem but i'm not i'm doing video and photography so i needed a whole new system which meant i could shoot on the go without any disruption without thinking my bag's too heavy or I, you know, I, the quality is not good enough. So basically what I'm doing now is I'm testing out a system and I guess you could call me a hybrid shooter. I'll have this GoPro, which is a Hero 7 Black, and this camera, which is a Fuji X-T3. The Fuji X-T3, which is you, this one, you're gonna be my main video camera, but you're also gonna be my main stills camera. And then GoPro here, is going to be backup video camera or support video camera. So one thing that concerned me with the hybrid setup is having a stills camera. Normally my stills camera is tucked away in my camera bag and then I'm quite selective about what I shoot. So if I see a photograph, I want to take my time, stop and sort of, you know, look at the composition and really be deliberate about it. But what that means is I have time to uh, put my camera back down, take the camera out of the bag, set it all up and everything like that. But when you're hybrid shooting, this camera is video as well as stills. So when I'm hiking on a trail, what I don't want to be doing is every time I see a nice bit of B-roll or video footage to help tell the story, I don't want to have to stop and get my bag out and get the camera out because I'm just going to miss the moment. I find video is far more reactive than stills photography. So what I need is a system where I can carry the camera to hand whilst hiking long miles. I thought about a clip on my bag here, which I do have, but I'm sporting an L bracket on this camera, so it's not possible. So, my good friend, Mr. Ben Horn, I will link to his channel when he does his backpacking trips. He uses a fantastic system, and I have completely watched his videos, and ripped off his idea, or, well, not really ripped it off, just taken his idea <laughs> um, and what he does is he uses a small bag such as this low pro and he just clips it to his he clips it to his uh, see that he clips it to his uh, strap of his bag and then in here will be this camera so if I'm hiking along hang on if I'm hiking along and I brought my walking pole today to see just to test that it doesn't interrupt when I'm hiking and it really doesn't, although it appears to be swinging around, it really doesn't get in the way. It's very, very comfortable and tucked away. So, the idea is, if I see a shot, a bit of video, or even a photograph, you know, none of this taking off the rucksack nonsense, I can just open this, pull out the camera, and film. And this is great because it also has a protective rain cover. And then this will fit neatly. <laughs> inside this old reliable low pro that I've had for years and years and years. So my videos are gonna be completely different and I don't really know how it's gonna go. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to create the same mood and atmosphere that I do in my normal videos, but that's because my normal videos, usually I can carry more gear. Whereas when you're hiking through the mountains of Nepal, you don't wanna carry 
anything more than you need to. So I'm going super minimal, a GoPro and a Fujifilm X-T3. So as I walk to try and find another image, um, I thought I'd talk about the things that I'm actually testing on this test video. Uh, well, the f I suppose the, the main one is just general ergonomics. Can I use the GoPro and the Fujifilm in unison? Can I get them both to work together to create a nice video and take nice photographs and tell a story? Um, because there's a lot of stuff I do that very much depends on my vlogging camera, which is the Canon M50. So effectively I'm replacing the Canon M50 and just keeping the GoPro. So can I get these two cameras, you and you, <laughs> to work together? Um, another thing as well, this Fuji, due to battery life, well I'm testing the battery life, but also file sizes and all that kind of thing, because I'm shooting this at 1080p, but I'm shooting the GoPro at 4K, so that with the GoPro I can cut in um, and crop in and just make for a more dynamic camera to give me more options in the edit suite. Whereas this camera, 1080p, because that's what I always upload at. Oh, also I should say as well, this, this is my camera. I paid full retail price for this. I am in no way sponsored or affiliated with Fujifilm. So yeah, general test, does it work? Am I happy with the images? Does the battery life work? Is the audio good? Am I in focus? Are there any little quirks and quips that I need to know about when filming? Not only with the GoPro in 4K, but with the Fujifilm. How's the image quality? Don't forget I'm taking stills with this camera as well. So I've only taken one photograph this morning. Is it good enough? Is switching from the 5D Mark IV to this too much of a compromise? I don't know. I don't think it will be. And, oh, I should also say I haven't switched. This is just an additional camera. Um, so yeah, but today, purely is a test for me more than anything and I really hope you're enjoying coming along for the ride. I think next week there will be a video where I talk more in depth about this camera um, and what I've learned and what my thoughts on it are. So yeah, if you want to watch that then uh, <laughs> feel free but I will massively understand if you're not interested. All right, let's go and see if we can find another photograph before this mist completely dissipates. So the mist unfortunately has dissipated, but that's not to say you can't find great images in the woods without mist. Of course you can, it's just a lot harder. Uh, one thing I would like to say is, uh, seeing as we're doing a test, how do I look? Because this is a go. This is a pretty much a brand new GoPro and it hasn't been put through its paces like most of my cameras, but I can just see that the inside of the lens is starting to fog up, which is uh, not good, so I might look a bit washed out I'm not sure I'm probably don't look as sharp as I can do so that's something I need to address but let's talk about this composition very quickly um it's 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 a nice scene it's a very very complicated difficult scene so much so that I've spent at least 15 minutes messing on with the composition moving left moving right switching lenses etc and i finally settled on a horizontal format because i went vertical horizontal i also tried a, a longer focal length with my 18 to 55 lens i believe is it it's new um yeah 18 to 55 but i felt that was too tight which meant the main subject was too hemmed in and you want room to breathe so i switched to the 10 to 24 which is the equivalent on full frame of a 16 to 35 um, but I'm sure you already knew that so this scene what really got my attention there's two rocks those rocks are covered in beautiful vibrant green moss growing out of the center of those two rocks 
is a single tree with beautiful peak autumnal foliage. And then we have a few nice surrounding elements like rocks to the left and more colour to the right. And we're looking downhill, which is important because there's no sky in my shot. I think in woodland photography, your number one enemy is the sky. If you can leave out the sky, then you're already way ahead of where you would be otherwise. The most important thing I should probably talk about here is the addition of this polarizer. The difference that a polarizer makes to the color within your scene is phenomenal and I will demonstrate here on my camera. If I spin the polarizer, you can see the colors. You can see it go to a from a fairly washed out looking scene to a rich, vibrant, colorful scene. And that's because the polarizer cuts out all of the glare that's reflecting from the waxy leaves of the sky, cuts through that so you see more of the rich colors of the leaves without sort of reflections of the sky above. And that makes a huge difference. So if you're doing woodland autumnal photography, a polarizer is your friend. I didn't use it in my last photograph because I, as I explained, I didn't have time. That mist was rolling through and I needed to get the shot, but here, I have much more time. So I can see my image is nice and sharp. I'm at F8 ISO 160 and my histogram is looking good. My polarizer is dialed in and I don't need a two second timer because I have a cable release. So I'm gonna take the photograph and hopefully this will be another nice image from this morning's test video. Okay, so I've just changed battery. I have been, well, I've taken about three or four photographs um, of two different scenes and I've been filming, I don't know, I've probably only shot about 15 minutes worth of footage. That would be my estimate. So not a great deal of footage and I've just had to change the battery on this camera. So a little bit disappointed because I know my Canon M50 would last two days you know, fair enough, I'm not taking pictures, but still recording video at 1080p. So a bit disappointed, but I kind of knew this. So um, I, I purchased five batteries basically. So we're on to battery number two. And my gosh, it's only 9.37 in the morning. So that is something definitely worth considering. So I hope you enjoyed that slow motion. Uh, I really wanted to test the 120 FPS, but nothing's moving. It's such a still day and the squirrels are too quick for me. So I had to do a nice little, you know, model walk into shot, kind of blue steel, uh, pretty good. But yeah, what I've, no what I've well, realized, you know, what I've learned with this camera, what's great is literally there is, because this camera is so customizable, there is a flick of a switch. Um, it literally takes two presses of a button to go from normal 24 frames per second to super fast 120 FPS. So, yeah, very, very handy when hiking and filming and all that sort of stuff. But I am here because this caught my interest. You see these trees just here, these twisted, twisted gnarly trees? Definitely worth a quick photo shoot. Probably my last shot of the day or of the morning anyway. So with this camera, I have three lenses. And so far today, I've used two, which is the wide angle, the mid range. And now I'm gonna try the long lens, which is a 55 to 200. 
So I switched from an 18 to 55 to a 55 to 200 and here I'm just framing up my shot. Uh, but I'm actually framing it up at 55 mil so it wasn't necessary for me to switch lenses but I'm glad I did because the 18 to 55 which photographed my first image gave me some major problems which I'll speak about in next week's video. Whereas this lens actually at 55 mil seems to be just fine. I'm dialing in my aperture of f5.6 to give a nice soft background and I'm using the histogram to check my exposure and make sure the shadows are in and the highlights are not blown out. It's now just a case of pressing the shutter and capturing the third photograph from today's test video. So I'm not sure about that last image. I think it's okay. It would have been so much better if we had some mist, but the thing with landscape photography is more often than not, when you go out in the morning, the conditions are best early on. And then as the sun rises, things tend to deteriorate most of the time. And I think that's what's happened today. I think my first image was by far my strongest. And looking at the back of the camera, I'm really happy with that. Second one was okay. That one, yeah, I don't know. Not too bad, I suppose. Um, but I guess I'll never know until, well, I will know, but I'm not going to know really until I get back to my computer. But I've had a great morning testing out my new system, playing with this camera for the first time, learning the quirks and quibbles of it. There are a few pleasant surprises and a few annoyances, all of which I'll talk about in next week's video, because as well as this camera and changing my system, I've bought a ton of new gear for this trek. Now, I very rarely do a gear video, but I think next week's going to be a... Uh, yeah, I think we're on a run of new gear videos recently because I've just got so much new stuff. So we'll check that out next week. And now I'm going to end this video with a massive thank you to my sponsor Squarespace. If you don't know who Squarespace are, they are an all-in-one website platform where you go on, log on, build your websites. If you don't know coding, HTML, you want a nice fancy looking photography website to showcase your images, yeah, it's that easy to build. I've built one myself. Uh, I've built a couple myself in a very minimal amount of time. So go to squarespace.com forward slash Heaton, give it a free try. If you like your free trial, use the off code Heaton for 10% off your first purchase. I thank you very much, and I will see you next week where we will discuss more so this camera, my experiences today, and all of the new gear that I've purchased. All right, bye for now. <laughs>